Hey, good morning everybody. This is David Cox. I am driving out to the farm right now and I wanted to take a few minutes to be able to talk about things that I'm working on on the farm, things I see that I think that we need to have on the farm. Still do not own the first cow. I will probably not own any cows until maybe August or September, but I can tell you some things that I am doing to prepare for, uh, for getting you know, getting set to start running my own farm operation. One is uh, obviously learning all about the cows that I possibly can. I'm learning different breeds of cows, learning, you know, what size I need to get to to be able to sell them. Um, reading a lot of books, watching a lot of videos, and talking to so many people. If you're getting started before you ever start owning a cow, there are three people you need to talk to. One is your extension agent. Like for me, it's my UT extension agent. Um, and then you need to talk to your natural resource conservation agency. Um, and then you need to get in touch with, in my opinion, the Cattlemen's Association in your area. They're a great group of guys. And they're gonna get you more connected with the farmers around you because I am not too proud to admit that I do not know everything by a long shot about farming and those are three people that you really really need to start off meeting with um, they they've been immensely uh, helpful to me another person that you probably need to get in touch with is your local co-op you can go to tractor supplies that's perfectly fine um, your local co-op, and in our area, our local co-op is a great resource. They have all the sales reps for the different feed stores, different fertilized companies. They come out to your farm. They can take hay samples. They can help you with how to do soil samples. Um, and it's stuff that you can help track. Um, and in, in my line of work, it's if you can't track it, you don't know how you're doing. If you just go off a of feeling, then you really have no idea. You need to start gathering that data. I would start off with a hay sample. If you have hay from that farm that you're starting to run, start off with that. And then if you um, have, you know, I would do a soil sample of every field that you have. And it, it does cost $15 per soil sample. So if you got five fields, I mean, it's an investment but I would pay the money and just go ahead and do that soil sample of each field. And there's directions, contact your natural resource uh, agency and they will be able to help you with that. Um, but today we're gonna go out to the farm for a little bit and uh, let's, uh, let's show you some stuff that I've been working on. All right guys, so this is um, one of our fields here that I currently have. Um, the, the farmers always cut hay off of this right here and told me that I could do I could start working on my source of hay for uh, for the end of this year and for next year so we uh, we did put a hundred pounds of fertilizer per acre out here on this 20 acre lot um, it's growing great it looks really good I think uh, we'll be ready to start cutting it at the end of June is what uh, I'll just say my advisors because um, I'm going off of a lot of other people's opinions until I get my uh, my own experiences. But I, we got this out there. And then the other big part of this field is I have put um, one strand of hot wire all the way around the outside perimeter. There was one previous and it would it kind of, uh, I think it had been run over by a bush hog. Um, a tree had fallen over part of it. Um, it was a barbed wire strand, so we got that all back up and secure using some fiberglass posts um, and then also um, kind of utilizing what was already there. Uh, t it tested great whenever it was finally all up and everything, so excited that that is up and running. i kind of show you here what, what I've been working on. This has kind of been my process right here. I, uh, of course, I started off with birdhouses, and I've got 25 birdhouses out here right now. Um, I would love to get up closer. Wow, one just flew out right there. Um, I think that was an eastern bluebird that's in that one. 
Um, I think the, the process I'm wanting to do is the birds get that population rolling. Um, I know most of my boxes have nests in it and you can see here, I've been cutting down um, any kind of briars that have been in the fence rows, cedar trees. Um, granted, I've got to haul this stuff off, um, but just trying to get it out of the fence row, try to get a, a strong fence row going. Um, this is five strand barbed wire that has been here for a long time, but it was broken in quite a few places. So I've kind of pieced that together. My goal is to have one strand of hot wire on the inside of this. And I'm learning a lot more about grasses. Um, these buttercups that are out there, um, I know they're not good, but I am uh, in the process of figuring out what to do. To spray them is one option, um, but if I spray them and there's nothing that's going to take over, you know, in place of them, they'll just come right back. So... I'm trying to figure all that out. But this field is, is kind of my next project field right here. Um, I have, let me see, I have done a strand of hot wire all the way back into that corner. And it goes back into the woods a good little bit. And then there is a pond right in that section there. And that's where the cows currently get their water from. Um, I plan on fencing that off. Um and then running the strand of hot wire all the way back. And this, that field goes back a little bit to the tree line. But doing all that, coming out, fencing around the pond, and then going back again with the hot wire. And I believe there is one strand of hot wire here. If there's not, then we're just gonna go off of this one strand, this two strand hot wire over here and just connect it all the way around. So that's kind of my plan for this week to try to try to tackle that and see how it goes. So let me tell you a little bit about my fencing kit. Um, this is, these are the essentials in my opinion. So you need a, a weed eater that's got a nice grass metal cutter on, you can cut down briars with that. You can do pretty, uh, a good, a good bit. If anything's over, you know, an inch thick, that's why you have your chainsaw. And your chainsaw is kind of your second pass. What I always do is I start off with the weed eater, go through. I'm not trying to cut grass. I'm trying to cut more of the woody stuff that's going to cause problems for my electric fence and going to ground it out. But I do that. Go walk down through the fence row, cut as much as you can, then turn around. Ah, oh, most important part. Leather gloves. I cannot tell you how important these things are. I don't care if they're cheap, if they're good, just get something because you will wear them out pretty quick. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, I walk down, cut, cut the fence row, and then when I walk back up, I pull all the fence row, uh, the trash off of the fence row as much as I can, and then come back with a chainsaw. And it's working pretty well for me right now. All right, guys, I'm in the back of that field that we were just talking about. So my hot wire is going down that side, way back there, way back into that tree line. And there's a creek down here that I don't want my cows to get into. Um, there is a water reserve already on this pasture. So I don't want them to, so you can see that creek down there. So what I've done is I'm just mapping this out in my head, really. But I've taken these little fiberglass posts and kind of started to run, let's see here, if you started to run my line, in my head, really, run my line and put a post here. So if the line from there to there, and then I went down, kind of looked down the line, let's see if I can zoom in here, and just visually, you can see where I put my next post. So I can see it from here. It's in a pretty straight line from here. Um, and I just did that all the way around. Um, I'm not gonna walk it all, but it, I went all the way around up until we get to that water reserve. That is, see where that break in the trees, that one single tree that's standing there? That's where that water reserve is, in our pond. So um, just kind of worked my way around to that. 
and uh, hopefully put some hot wire on that. Like I said, we don't own the uh, we don't own the cows. We don't lease the farm, uh, but the farmer's okay with me doing this part of it. And then whenever we're ready to put the hot wire across it, we'll already have the post in, and we can have that done pretty quickly. So this is what we're fencing off, guys. We don't want our cows to be down there. And they probably wouldn't be. You can see the five strand barbed wires down there. Probably wouldn't be, but I need power all the way around this pasture. So um, this pond, we're gonna try to take care of a little bit. You can see it's just, we had a big rain yesterday. It's just muddy as all get out, but we're going to take care of it the best we can. <laughs> 